Rub up your engines! Well, with the price of used vehicles getting higher, people are often buying older vehicles like this truck that have a lot of mileage on it. Before you waste your money on a junker, simple test you can do to see is it worth buying or is the engine a worn out piece of crap. Now as you can hear, this engine's running. It isn't running that good. Who knows, it could be spark plug, could be fuel injectors, could be the engine. So first, we'll put a scan tool on it. We'll find where the plug is. This one's falling out, but it's over here. We got it connected, and we'll do a diagnosis. Service engine soon light is on. Now, we don't care about the ABS. That's an old truck. We don't expect it to work, but it's not running right. You can tell. Listen to that. Doesn't sound right, so. 3,500. Dually. It's got a six liter engine. Auto diagnosis. So we can see. It's got 39 failures, that's an awful lot. And here we go. Look at the mass air, flow sensor, intake, air temperature. The oxygen sensors are funky. It's running lean on bank one, but then it says it's running rich on bank one, and it has engine misfire, knock sensor. It's got all kinds of crap going on with it. This thing actually sat for years out in a field. Who knows what the real history of it is? We want to try to get rid of that jiggling misfire so we're going to erase all the codes so we'll push clear all the codes if i've erased all the codes we'll start from scratch and see what pops up first who knows what's happened to this thing in the last four or five years of sitting in a field so here's some interesting data it says the intake air temperature is minus 39 degrees well it's not that cold out it's actually 32 degrees above saying that it's that cold Obviously that's gone bad. And you can see as we rub up the engine, the mass airflow sensor isn't even changing. That's not working at all. Now as you look at the data here, we can see the short term fuel trim of bank one, it's almost perfect. It's subtracting a little, subtracting a little, but look at the short term fuel trim on bank two. It's adding a ton of fuel on bank two. As you can see, the bank one short term, minus two, minus 1.6, 0.8 that's not too bad that's the short-term bank one now look at the short-term bank two it's adding 25 percent fuel to bank two so at idle bank two is running really lean let's hope it's something like a vacuum leak bank two is this side so we're gonna look for a vacuum leak on this side so i'll take this cover off so you can see what's happening inside now as you can see here vacuum lines wiggling like mad Something's loose in there. Well, obviously, that's one leak we'll have to fix. Now, lucky for me, I got a whole box of O-rings, so here they are. I'll just pick the old O-ring out of this one. Easier said than Don's been in here all those years. There it goes. We'll put a new one on. New one that isn't all crappy. Well, I'll have to forget the gloves on this. You can't work with O-rings with gloves. Get on, it'll go in the hole better. There. Not snapped in the hole. Get a plan ahead. These things are a lot cheaper to buy when you buy them in a box. Now you can see this isn't wiggling around. That fixed at least the vacuum leak. So let's start it back up. Check it out now. Short term fuel trim bank one is now zero. And bank two is now zero. Sometimes things are that simple to figure out. You got one bank running way too lean. There's usually an air leak somewhere. We got that fixed. Doesn't mean all cars fixed, but at least we know that's one of the big problems. Now diving a little further, you'll now notice that the air intake temperature is seven degrees Celsius, which makes sense. The reason it went wacky, who knows what happened while I was sitting in the field was, the mass airflow sensor wasn't plugged in, so I plugged it back in. But here's one thing you don't want to see, the ignition advancer number one cylinders all over the place. 21, 17, 15, 27 and a half. But when we rev it up, it pretty much stabilizes. Look at that. 38 and a half, 39, but watch when we let go and it starts to idle. Now it's 13, 20, 19, 18 and a half, 13, 18, 17, 12 and a half. It's bouncing all over the place. Now this baby does have 279,000 miles on it. Now the timing bouncing around like that at idle, but then when you rev it up, it stabilizes and stays. Shows that the timing chain is worn in the engine. No biggie there with 279,000 miles on the engine. Because of course, this is an old style push rod engine with a timing chain on. You decide when you look at a car like that, do you want to tear the engine apart? And I mean, 
it would be foolhardy to tear this engine apart and just put a timing chain on it. The rest of the engine is certainly extremely warm because we can see here after resetting the codes it's already tripping random misfire now the guy who bought this changed the spark plug spark plug wires didn't make any difference at all because basically the engine's worn out but look at the live data look at the engine live data misfire first there's 77 85 misfires on number five changes while you're driving it of course number four cylinders misfire in a bunch now now number four misfires more than the rest for sure you can see you wrap it up it's misfiring more it stops and then it comes back and that was live data let's look at historical historical you can see this thing's misfired number four five thousand seven hundred seventy nine number five fourteen sixty four number six sixteen seventy so basically four five and six are the worst ones and three starting to go number four is on bank two on the passenger side but cylinder number five is on bank one and cylinder six is back again on the passenger side so it's not something that could be just one side of the engine or the other it's just going kind of randomly because the engine is worn it's not worn evenly really do they wear evenly but since both sides of the engines are worn it's a v8 engine if you say well maybe i'll do the head on the one side well the other side's bad too you get involved in rebuilding one of these engines to rat's nest unless you do the whole thing and it's very expensive well here's some interesting data here the orange one is oxygen sensor bank two and the red one is oxygen sensor bank one now they're supposed to kind of follow each other and watch what happens when i rev it up they go all over the place they're supposed to be jagged lines going up and down to equalize this engine is so worn out that it's trying everything it can to try to make it run okay by adjusting things but as you can see instead of being jagged lines up and down they keep trying to react to problems that are exist in this worn out engine so instead of being nice good jagged lines going up and down it's this crazy pattern that you should never see. What's happening in this case is the computer's trying to compensate for the problems that the engine has. It knows that some cylinders aren't working right and they're not putting enough fuel in and it tries to add more and some of them they're adding too much and it's trying to add less. It's just totally confused because the engine's worn out. Now a test that anybody can do, let's say if you think, well, maybe those fuel injectors on those three cylinders are bad. Well, the guy who got this truck I already tried that he swapped fuel injectors around and it made no difference those cylinders were still acting up and like i say they got new spark plugs and everything on them and wires so it's not like they're acting up the problem is the engine is just flat worn out inside and even though we know the timing chain is worn just bounce around and idle but when you rev it up it's not bouncing because it's going faster that's not the absolute root of all these problems because if the timing chain was off it would affect all cylinders equally and you can see that three of them especially the number four cylinder was misfiring much more than the other ones changing the spark plugs changing the wires moving the fuel injectors didn't change that misfire so basically you either put another engine in this thing or if you were thinking about buying it you didn't want to put that kind of money or you don't want to mess around with it you wouldn't buy it in the first place. And of course, if you're looking at a vehicle or you're going to fix a vehicle you already own and say it's starting to run poorly, the first, absolute first thing you want to check out is, is the engine in good shape or is it worn out? In this case, 279,000 miles, it only makes sense that it's worn out. But now, with data, we understand, yes, it is worn out. You owned it and you're going to continue to drive it and you didn't care that it didn't run that good except when you got at higher speeds that ran better you might say it's an old truck who cares i'll live with it but if you live in an area unlike clarksville here where you got to get your vehicle inspected every year this thing would never pass inspection and you would have to rebuild the engine to get it to pass inspection but this is why you want a guy like me a good mechanic to check out a vehicle before you buy it using fancy scan tools we can tell you maybe it's just the vacuum leak it had a vacuum leak, figured it out with a scan tool, put a new O-ring in, but that was just the tip of the iceberg. The real bit of the iceberg is that the engine's just wearing out on it. And unless you're gonna rebuild the engine, it's not gonna run right because people can try to hide things when they're selling used vehicles. You can't hide from the scan tool. And the data that these things have 
realize you saw that data it had and this is a 2001 it had all that data the new ones it has even more data on it now you know how to check out a car how to have it checked out have the engine checked out first the most important thing don't look at this that and everything else the only thing that really cost a ton of money is the engine or transmission and in this case since it wasn't running correctly and had engine problems you figure that out first and don't start messing with everything else go to the big money first and if the big money is more than you care to put in it hey maybe you'll like a big truck you get it dirt cheap and you decide hey i'm going to rebuild the engine or i'm going to put a bigger engine in it fine and dandy you can get a good price on it because it doesn't run right right but don't think oh i can fix that cheap you got to analyze it first maybe that vacuum leak would have fixed the whole thing it didn't it made it run a little bit better but it didn't fix the underlying misfire problem because I reset all the codes and just letting it sit here. It already tripped a bunch of ones anyways. So, you know, it's got a serious problem. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.